Hi friends, I hope everyone is doing well. I thought it'd be a fun exercise to see how many layers I could add to a collage and have it turn out successfully. Working in layers adds depth to a collage, but in my opinion, you can run the risk of having the collage look too cluttered and not cohesive if the layers are not well thought out. So let's give it a try. I'm starting by painting the first layer, which is the ground, with Paper Artsy Space Cadet. Typically, I like to have painted or paper ground. It helps me to visualize the layout of the collage as I build it. Now that the ground is dry, the second layer will be marks made by a pink Posca paint pen. I'm creating a simple overall pattern, knowing that a good portion of it will be covered by the collage. Still working on the second layer, I'm bringing in a Uniball Signa Gel ink pen in white to add additional overall marks. Some may say that drawing tiny marks is tedious, but I find it relaxing. I'm not concerned with perfect dots, more like expressive dots in slightly different sizes and shapes. The third layer is the start of adding paper to the collage. I pulled bright green and orange mono printed papers for this layer. This is a good time to mention that I'll be tearing all the papers for this collage and it will have an overall composition. At this stage, I'm tearing the papers in large sizes as the base to add smaller pieces for future layers. Also, I'm positioning the papers spaced apart to lay the groundwork for the overall composition. For the fourth layer, I'll be using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in Teal Green along with the 3 inch by 5 inch gel plate to stamp an image on the surface. I'm coating the gel plate with a dab of paint then coming in with an old gift card that has slits in it to make the image. I'm lightly pressing the gel plate on the page, then I'll repeat this process two more times. I like to have some or all of the stamp images coming off the page. To me, it's visually pleasing. Also, I'm overlapping these images on top of the existing papers. I brought out this yellow painted paper for the next layer. At this stage, the collage has mid to dark values. I would consider this paper mid-tone, but since it's brighter than the other colors, it's bringing a lighter look to the collage. I'm tearing the papers in medium sizes and continuing to overlap the pieces on top of the existing papers and images. With this next layer, I'm bringing in paper that is light in value and tearing the paper into smaller and thinner shapes. Having a variety of sizes adds interest to the collage, along with papers in light, medium, and dark values.
For this final layer, I want to bring in small pieces of dark green papers to balance the mid to light values, just a couple of pieces as accents. This is the finished collage with seven layers. Let's continue on to the next one. For this next collage, I'm starting with the cover of a magazine to glue to the ground. Since it has a glossy finish, I'm using soft gel matte medium to adhere to the page and to put a thin coat on top of it to dull down the finish. Once the gel medium is dry, I'm coming in with Blake's matte acrylic paint in green deep dark. I still consider this step the first layer. This paint isn't opaque as I would like, but it's giving a good variation of color, which is a nice detail to the ground. Next, I brought out Blake's matte acrylic paint and amethyst in a cardboard roll to add marks to the ground. Normally, I would pour out the paint on a palette, then dab the cardboard in it, but this bottle is almost out of paint. I don't want to waste any of it, so I'm using a brush to apply the paint to the roll. It's a bit time consuming, but it works just fine. I'm okay that the stamp images aren't perfect circles. I like that the circles are various thicknesses and not all are complete circles. Since the ground is dark, I'm starting by adding light value papers. I love the color combination of green and purple. As you can see, this collage will have a cruciform composition, which is my go-to composition. For contrast, the next layer will have orange painted papers. The orange circle paper ties in with the amethyst circles on the ground. This helps with the cohesiveness of the collage.
Continuing with adding contrast, I bring out dark blue papers and sizing down these papers as well. I like how this collage is looking, but I think it needs a strong contrast color. This chartreuse paper fits perfectly. I'm cutting the paper into thinner pieces so this color won't overtake the collage. It's being used as a strong accent color. To finish off the collage, one small piece of dark purple paper is added. It covers an awkward area where a lot of the other papers meet. Also, it adds a small amount of dark value. I decided to use dark purple instead of introducing a color that hasn't been used previously. It ties in with the light purple papers. This collage has the same amount of layers as the first collage. Let's see if the next one can add a few more layers. For the final collage, I'm using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in black and white to paint on the ground. I have a few bottles of gray in my stash, but I'm painting an expressive ground in various shades of gray. I would rather use black and white paint to mix it. My plan for the ground is to have a graffiti look. I brought out five inch stencils and a Robert Simmons one inch stencil brush. I'm only using three of these stencils so not to overtake the ground, placing each one at an angle and slightly off the page as well. I want the letters to be read as a collage element, not text. Stenciling on a journal page is a bit trickier than on a flat piece of paper. I'm using a stippling motion with a dry brush to apply the paint through the stencil onto the page.
For the next layer, I'll be using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in Dark Blue Light. It's a good primary blue and a Richardson 3 quarter inch stencil brush. This is my homemade number stencil. I'm going to place it covering the whole page, but I won't be stenciling all the numbers. Instead, I'm stenciling around the black MRB and slightly overlapping in some areas. As you may have noticed, I started with a large stencil, then moved to this mid-side stencil. Variation of sizes adds interest to a collage. For this fourth layer, I brought out a small stamp that I made from a carving block. I'm using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in Green Deep. This is a good secondary color green. I haven't tried this technique of rolling on paint to a small stamp, so I wanted to give it a try. The small gel plate will be used to get the paint onto the roller. If this technique doesn't work, then I'll apply the paint using a gel plate in a similar way as if it was an ink pad, meaning pressing the stamp onto the paint covered gel plate. I'm stamping the areas of the ground that has empty space and slightly overlapping on the letters and numbers. I'm not overdoing this stamp on the page. The ground layers are done, so on to adding painted papers. My plan is to create a vertical composition. I'm starting with a green-yellow monoprinted paper in a grid pattern. This style of pattern lends itself into cutting into strips that can emphasize the vertical composition. Also, bright colors contrast nicely with the ground. Next, I want to go lighter in value with this white paper with the green dots. To continue with the vertical composition, I'm cutting this paper into a rectangle. The next two rectangles are slightly smaller to add interest to the design. It may be contradictory to what I just said, but laying these elements horizontally won't take away from the vertical orientation. These small papers won't take this collage into a horizontal composition, but both will add interest. It's one of those times to trust the process. Bringing in this bright pink paper adds further contrast to the collage.
Looking at the three papers placed vertically and one small paper horizontally, do you see that this collage still reads as a vertical composition? I'm continuing to add contrasting colored paper in various sizes for the next layer. At this stage, I'm also thinking of placement of the paper so the ground will show through in certain areas. As I start to build another layer, I want to bring in paper that reads mostly as yellow. This color paper and the way it is cut into thin strips ties into the green and yellow grid paper so the collage is still cohesive. Also placing all the cut papers in a vertical orientation helps as well. In my opinion the collage doesn't seem cluttered since the color yellow has been introduced earlier in the collage process. And finally the last layer, number 10. It may seem unexpected and contradictory to the previous layer to add a dark purple element. My thought is that it reads as the same value as the blue numbers on the ground. Also, since blue-violet is a tertiary color, then I think the purple paper works. Here's the final collage. Let's do a quick recap in the next section. I'm happy with the way this collage turned out. As compared to the other two collages, it looks a bit simple. I feel that this collage and the other two are balanced and cohesive. I like this collage as well. I must admit I'm biased when it comes to collages using the cruciform composition since it's my go-to. I like that the cross shape is off-center. It's an interesting layout. Even though this collage has 10 layers, I think it's a good collage. In my opinion, it's not cluttered. I do admit this collage was a bit outside my comfort zone, but I like that feeling when creating art. It pushes me to grow as an artist. I'd like to know what you think. Do you consider all three of these collages are balanced and cohesive? Do you use many layers when creating a collage? I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Take care.